Okay, unboxing time. We got our classic industries box. Um, ordered new locks and ignition mod, uh, ignition switch. Well, not the switch, but the uh, ignition tumblers. Seventy nine Trans Am. Big box of little parts. There we go, we got our ignition keys. And we got the lock, the rest of the locks. Looks like our two door locks. Got two door locks. We got our trunk lock and our glove box lock. All right. Um, well, let's get these put on the car. Turn off. Okay. Okay. So here we are back on our '79 Trans Am. Um, lock. The key lock is all boogered up. Doesn't want to unlock uh, so I'm going to show you how to disassemble the steering column to uh, replace that and you know the flashers or wherever else that, that might be down inside the steering column that you might need to replace um, not going to take it down as far as the tilt mechanism uh, only because I don't have the proper tools for that um, and I don't have any I, I mean I can make them but I don't have any I don't have the time right now to, to make them I'm just going to show you how to replace the top part of the steering column and what all is involved with that. Um, we have our new locking cylinders, correct, with the GM keys. Which means now I probably shouldn't have to replace any of the... I shouldn't have an issue with the keys. They're all proper GM keys, uh, which I did not have for these. If I can get the keys. These ones... This isn't a true value. This is a made for GM cars one. Um, but they're old, they're worn. Um, but now these are fresh new keys, complete with key locks. Um, so we're going to start by uh, removing these five screws and the horn button. Okay, now that we have the horn button removed and the wheel is free of the car, the next thing we have to get done is there is a there is a nut down there at the bottom that needs to come off. Uh, that will release the horn button, the horn assembly, uh, and then we can actually pull this. This collar will come free. Uh, actually, no, the We'll have to use a steering wheel puller to uh, pull the collar free uh, to get down to the more inner parts of the steering wheel. We now have the nut removed, which will release the horn assembly. Uh, set that aside. Now, you're going to need this nut again to uh, remove the plate behind this collar. Use a puller um, to get the, uh, the collar off. Alright, so you have your... Uh, your puller set up, you put your uh, wrench on the end and you tighten it down and it pulls the collar up off of the uh, off off the shaft. Okay, so after you tighten it down, it uh it pulls the whole assembly off of it. Alright, and then you are left with this plastic collar into the more wor uh, center workings of the steering column. Alright, um there are three points here, here, and here uh, where you would take a screwdriver you take a screwdriver in and pop the uh, little plastic clips loose um, alright once you have your collar loose you're going to remove that and you're going to see this metal plate alright deep down in there the bottom of the shaft you have a, um, a snap ring uh, to do that you're going to to remove that you're going to need a tool 
Um, I had made one. It's just a metal bracket that you use the nut to hold the collar on. All right, and it'll push down on that clip so you can get the uh, snap ring out. All right, now that you have the um, the tool installed. Um, you have enough pressure off of that snap ring that you should be able to pull the snap ring out with a small pair of a uh, small screwdriver. Uh, once that's removed, you can back this nut off, and this whole assembly should pop off. All right, so I have the snap ring removed. Uh, you can see it's sitting up there, I'm having trouble with this camera focusing. I'm going to slowly back this nut off. you'll see we'll free this whole thing up okay you can then remove the snap ring along with the plate don't lose that snap ring. Okay, so you got this plate here. All right, it'll only fit on one way. Okay. Then you have the rest of the horn assembly and a coil spring. Uh, there's some other smaller parts down in there that you don't want to lose. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be removing is the screw in the. Uh, 10 o'clock position. First screw removed. This is going to have a little plate that's going to come out with it. Um, it does slide into the turn signal lever. This is what causes the turn signals to move. Uh, you're going to have that way and that way. All right. And when you turn the steering wheel, it snaps it back into the center position. The next screws we're going to remove are here, uh, there and one here. Uh, you kind of you want to have the turn signal position in the uh, furthest down position you can so you can reach all three of the screws. Uh, once them, that, those are out, uh, we can pull this slightly out of our way and then we're going to have to go to the bottom side of the steering column to show you how to disconnect the wire and pull that um, pull that assembly out in case you need to replace the the turn signal uh, switch. Okay, with your three screws removed, um, this whole assembly is free. Um, you're now going to have to go down underneath of the steering column to start removing uh, parts down there to get the, the whole assembly free. All you need to do is remove this cover. Uh, there should be two uh, turn fasteners down there. Uh, this car has been jerry-rigged, so there is a nutted screw. I had already partially disassembled it for you. Okay. After removing this cover, you will see uh, two big nuts. There's one here and one right here. Um, those plus these four uh, here will need to be removed uh, before the so you can drop the steering column down and get to your turn signal wiring. All right, with those removed, uh, this plate will fall down out of your way, and so will the steering column drop down. Okay. Now, under there you have your ignition switch, and um, this will be your high beam switch. Um, all right, you have a plastic sleeve that your wiring goes into. Uh, this just pops down off of this. All right, you're going to need to remove this connector here and then remove this from the steering column itself. All right, once those are done out of the way, uh, it's got two square holes that it slides on. Um, then you can slide this whole plastic sleeve down and out. Uh, releasing the wires for the uh, the wipers 
and you can then slide out your whole wiper switch assembly out of the top of the steering column. Now that that is free, you can you can feed the uh, the wiring up through the steering column and remove your turn signal switch. Uh, be careful not to lose any screws. I have one left that is just sitting in here. Right, you might have to fight with this a little bit. Uh, just work your way, work it back up through the steering column. All right, you can feed it up through there, and you have your whole assembly here. Here's the back side of it. Um, not easy and you're gonna have to feed that back down through there when you pull it out um, my thing is if you don't have to pull it all the way out like if you're just replacing the ignition switch or something uh, don't pull it all the way out but if you have to you, you do what you need to do um, next thing you need to do is if you're going to be removing the ignition lock like we are uh, you need to pull this uh, the key buzzer uh, you need to pull that out um, be careful, it is fragile and it is not fun to put back in. It uh, comes out real simple, um, but like I said, it's not easy. Also, you need to uh, be careful not to lose this little clip right here. Um, that you can only put in from the back side, um, and that's after removing these three screws to get to that. Um, first we need to do is we need to remove the ignition. Uh, there is a Phillips head screw right here uh, that will need to be removed and the ignition will slide out. Make sure that the car is in the park position before you do so. All right, anyway, so you need to remove this Phillips screwdriver right here. I mean the Phillips, Phillips head screw. Alrighty. This is a little plug here. Um, your ignition will then slide out. Alright, and you have your old ignition. You will then need to slide your new ignition back in. Make sure it is in the park position. Alrighty, slide your new ignition in, and now we start repeating the process to put things back together. Uh, you're going to start with this screw. So you start to process in reverse, uh, put this back in. Okay, then you're going to need to put this little switch back in. Remember I said to be careful about that. I said that is fragile. Alright, once that's back in, you're going to want to thread the turn signals uh, wiring back down through the steering column. Put that back in place. Put the three screws back in. Okay, so you're going to want to thread these wires back down through here. Um, Set this switch back up into place where it belongs. You're gonna put your one, put your three screws back in. One here, here, and here. All right, you're gonna want to put this back in there. Um, you should have watched how you took it apart, um, but it just slides up into this hole here and slides into the shaft. All right, and that goes right there.
Alright, now that that's back together, we can start working on the bottom half of the steering column again. Uh, basically, reverse order of what you did, you need to slide the wiring back on the plastic case, put that back on the square um, studs for the um, for the steering wheel support, thread the steering wheel support back together and bolt that back up and then plug your wiring back in. We're back up here at the top. Uh, basically, we're now having to just assemble the top of it. Uh, put your spring back in. All right, your horn, lower half of your horn assembly, and your plate. You're going to put all your stuff back together. Uh, don't forget your snap ring. And you're going to put your tool on with the nut uh, just as you had it before uh, when you took this off. You're then going to push the snap ring back down around the collar, uh, snapping it back down into the groove in the base. Alright, you can then back the nut back off. and you're ready to assemble your collar and your steering wheel again. Alright, put your horn assembly in, make sure you line up the groove. Alright, now, I stuffed a piece of paper towel down inside the socket to keep the nut up at the front of the socket. Um, I'm sure you can figure out your own ways of uh, sliding this down in here to make it work. Crank this down real good. All right, you are now ready to install your steering wheel back on and your horn button. Put your six screws back in. Uh, also, be sure not to over tighten these and make sure you have them threaded in correctly before you type torque them down.
Alright, only thing left to do is install your horn button. Ready to cruise. Uh, my horn doesn't work, I'd show you. But, uh, mission works. Uh, goes into accessory. So, and that is how you fix an ignition switch or a turn signal or whatever's in the top end of the steering column. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Um, join Novitas Customs on Facebook for all of your car enthusiast pictures and videos.